Hello, and welcome to another episode of Tampa Bay Politics. I'm Angela Birdsong, former candidate for Hillsborough County Commission, and also affectionately known as the Medicare Lady, with my co-host, Mary Jirasi, Jordanist extraordinaire. Hello, <laughs> welcome to the show. We have an exciting show today. Vamos a hablar de Puerto Rico. All right. <laughs> Boricua. Eso, de corazón. <laughs> de corazón. All right. Well, many of us are aware of the issues um, um, facing the Puerto Rican community here and abroad. Yes. And so we have brought in a Puerto Rican activist by the name of Wanda Santiago. Sandra. Sandra. Sandra I'm sorry. Asuelo. Wanda is your cousin. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. The two are always together. Sandra. Acevedo. Acevedo. Okay. And she is here to talk to us about... What's going on with our Puerto Rican brothers and sisters here in the Tampa Bay community? And in Puerto Rico. And in Puerto Rico. Um, Sandra, as usual, came very well prepared. I know this young lady from uh, um, videotaping the Puerto Rican festival in Ybor City. It was crazy. Yep. It was one of the best days. Thousands of people in the streets, and uh, we did that upright, didn't we? Yes. And your mother was actually well, created she, that. Well, she was the mastermind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and every year she was honored by riding in the float. Correct. And she's going to be 93 years old. Wow. Yep. And what is her name? Gloria Rivera. Gloria. Yeah. Gloria Rivera. And, and you she, did that parade from, 19... from 1988 until uh, 2010. Okay. Yep. Yep. Until and 2010. We have quite... Uh, do you know the percentage of... Um, Puerto Ricans in this area. I know 30, they said 38% Hispanic, which includes all of the um, Latin and Caribbean ethnicities. Well, <laughs> if I tell you that, let me see, in, in the state of Florida, yeah. over 1,025,000 wow. are Puerto Rican. So, which means that we can decide, a, a, you know, the election. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can change the election. Yes. And we're going to be discussing that um a lot of Republicans are in fear that when the folks left Puerto Rico, the island, during the huracan after it happened, are coming here and they're going to be voting for Democrats. What oh, do you think? Yes, yes, I, I, I believe that. <laughs> because let me tell you, in Puerto Rico, according to statistics, 85 percent of the population, they vote. Wow. Oh, that's so wonderful. they come with that, uh, you know, mentality, uh, mentality okay, from the good, island. Good. It's just a matter of. You know, giving them some, some guidance. And there's an organization that does that, right? Well, there are a couple of organizations that is helping the Puerto Rican, like the Boricua de Corazón, and another one uh, that the name is... Uh, um, Mi Familia. Mi Familia Vota. My yes. Family Votes. My Family Votes. So with those organizations, they help, you know, the Puerto Rican to, to get organized and to go and vote. Yeah, I mean, you just lost your home, possibly lost family members. Up to 3,000 mm -hmm. people were, Correct. died. That's the current statistic. You you know, you, you haven't probably eaten. You're unsettled. You come to this country. You don't, I, God knows where you're staying. You're, you're disheveled. And probably the last thing on your mind is, oh, I got to vote. Well, but let me tell you, that is part of the... Uh, of, of the culture. The of, fabric. Of the, of the fabric. Yeah, the yeah, fabric Puerto of Puerto Ricans. Rica. Even though... It's like ah, it's like like coming here. You don't have a car, but you need you know that you need the the driver's license. Well, that is something that can move you right. ahead. Sure. Well, voting is part of our existing life because the elections change everything in, or they affect do. or affect your life no and matter you know what. The wonderful thing about Puerto Ricans, mm -hmm. all they have to do is register. Yep. Exactly. That's, That's the it. The only That's thing it. they need to do. Exactly. Once they hit this land mass, <laughs> they're in. Exactly. And, you know, there's going to be um, transcription sometimes to English. You know, oh, yes. folks come here, yes. they're still Americans, and they're still able to vote. So um, the voting organizations that are together can make sure that you get to the right place, that you understand uh, your rights in Spanish. Correct. And you can um, vote in um, the Hispanic language oh, if you, yes. do, you, you yes. get the ballot. So we're, we're supporting that. Well, the ballot is, uh, is bilingual. Yes. So they, we don't have any problem on that. They, they need to know who are the, the politician. Yeah. What do they offer? You see, and then... So you're finding then that they're a little confused. Once mm -hmm. they get here on, yeah. on, on oh, the yes. system, huh? Of course. Yes, because 
In Puerto Rico, we vote on election day, which is, let's say, in November, every four years. When we select the when we elect the presidents here in Puerto Rico, we elect all the politicians. Okay. You see, and and here There's we no have midterms. No, you uh, have one no. stop shopping. One stop shopping, and that's <laughs> yeah. it. Okay? Is it a holiday? It is. It a is. Holiday. I thought yes. so. Yes, yeah. you don't have to go to to work yeah. that day. We need to to get that going on in and the United States. And then, if your political party win the election, oh my goodness, you the, the oh. rumba continue. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I know where the Barcardi factory is. Oh, oh okay. Pina cola, cola, pina colada. Best pina colada ever. Yeah, we're going to party. Now, you gonna? have a governor that's conservative over there, don't you? There are some conservatives. Well, yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ricardo Rosselló. Uh, it, th- this, is, this is funny because uh, he in Puerto Rico is Republican. Okay. From the Republican Party. But being here in the U.S., He's a Democrat. <laughs> That's how different it is. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I know that is confusing. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can call it Republican light. Okay, light. Okay. They're they're not as conservative. They they're conservative comparatively to the Latin perspective. Uh-huh. But they're not as conservative as they are in America. Is that correct? That, well, let's say. Close. Close. <laughs> <laughs> and I take my fifth. You take the fifth. <laughs> she pleads the fifth. Now, you know what? You helped get a um, a lady elected in Tampa. Ah, uh, yes. The Honorable Karen Perez. The Honorable. Because yes. she is now on the school board. Exactly. The, per- the first Puerto Rican elected to uh, an official position. Yep. And she is doing a wonderful job. Karen Perez. Carmen Perez. Yes, mm-hmm. and she chose you to be her campaign manager. That's a smart lady. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I like to call Sandra the matriarch of the Puerto Rican community. She, she knows Thank everybody. You. Her mother has been a, a huge in, in the community. Yes. And she's the go-to gal when it comes to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. She's why she, she's on our show, right? We got the right gal. <laughs> Thank you. We didn't just call nobody. We called you. Oh, thank you now, for the invitation. You were, you were telling me that you were married to a politician. Oh, yes. That was many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I have that one still counts. son. That okay. still counts. <laughs> it, it, it does, because I have, a, I have a wonderful son that is an engineer. So um, tell me a little bit about his background. Well, Carlos, a... Uh, he studied, uh, we both studied at the, in the Catholic University in Puerto Rico. Uh, he has a bachelor's degree in social work. Uh, he was the first, well, he was involved in politics since day one when, she, when he graduated. Uh, and uh, he was uh, appointed to become the, uh, the first administrator of the youth uh, um, organization in the government level. Okay. Okay. In the cabinet of the of Puerto Rico. Wow. Yep. We don't have that positions here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but we okay. do in Puerto Rico. I had um, some family members who were in diplomatic service uh-huh. out of Barbados. Okay. Because my um, cousin was the um, the diplomat for um, education. Excellent. And he would come into um, the United Nations in New York, and we wow. get to see the family. So Excellent. that was a fun time. Yeah. So. Um, now tell me, um, he actually ran for office as well, right? Well, he he ran for office in Cabo, in Cataño, Puerto Rico. That's his uh, uh, his hometown. Okay. Unfortunately, he he didn't win, but he always has been involved in politics, always, all his life. So when did you come to the states? In 1978. Oh, okay. 1978 but, but, was my son. He was three years old. But tell us about your education. You well, have some political science background, is that correct? Yes, I have a bachelor's degree uh, in social work, uh, social work, sociology, and political science from the Catholic University of Puerto Rico. And then when I uh, relocated to Tampa, then I uh, I studied a master's. Oh, you got your master's? I got a master's, an MBA, specialized in management and marketing. At the, at That's Tampa why College. she's the matriarch. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went to work for who? <clears throat> Well, I, I went, to, I, I had different jobs. I went to work with, you know, the, the one that I loved the most was with the um, villas in Belmont Heights. That uh-huh. is here close to 
uh, on 22nd Street <laughs> close to Ybor City. Okay. I was called by a friend of mine and told me, Sandra, uh, we have in the city a, a complex of villas that, uh, that they were built with a, a combined uh, resources, financial resources, private and also uh, from the government. And we need someone that's, you know, that promote and, and make this Marketing. happen. It's affordable Everything. housing. Uh, it offered some affordable uh -huh. housing yes. as well as regular homes. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I began to work there. It was 200 uh, units. And uh, when I started, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was just few families what they have. But and I said, well, let me, let me write a, a plan, a business plan. And I went to the to the radio station and I presented my plan. He said, "Listen, this is going to be everybody here." So, and I convinced them to you know to give me time uh, to talk to the to the public and promote this uh, 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 um, uh, these villas. And I requested a a proposal, a, 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 um, un presupuesto, este, the budget, oh, okay. budget, yeah. budget, budget, and they have approved. Fifty thousand dollars. Yes. <laughs> so with that budget, then I, you know, uh, I market the villas in Orlando, in Tampa, everywhere. Oh. You see. How many so, villas were there were here in Tampa? Right now, in that area, I believe that are four hundred. When wow. I started, we had the face, the the first face for two hundred. Wow. Yeah. But you know, I have people living there still, still today. today. Yeah. You must be proud. Yes, you must be yes. proud. Affordable housing, big subject. We've had it on our show yeah. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We're all for it. We need it. And That's who's the company who actually did the building? I have no idea. I yeah. know that was a group of um, attorneys that actually put that, that project they together. Asked, exactly. Yeah. I'm awesome. part of the money. I yeah. see. They, the same situation as uh, Elas Apartments. That's the same. It's private sector combined with the government fundings. Yeah. Oh, I see. We need see? more of that. Yeah, we uh -huh. do. We do. I don't know why that went by the wayside because it sounded like a very successful project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there, there's a lot that needs to be done with affordable housing, homeless. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, that reminds me that when I was uh, there, uh, came this lady with two with two children, and, and she said to me, Sandra, uh, the problem that I have is that my my husband was beating me and blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know something? I'm, I'm going to find a place for you over here. But you have to promise me that you're going to do something. He said, well, yes. I said, well, go to the shelter. I know that is not the first, you know, the best picture. Right. But go to the shelter and bring me that letter that you, asked, that you are there. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and then Officially I asked, homeless. Yes, exactly. And then uh, uh, with the document that the, she had everything, mm -hmm. you see? Well, then in less in less than a month, she was moving in. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Lord. You're an advocate. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Um, you're a little feisty. <laughs> tu eres Latina. I mean, everybody wonders why I'm feisty and a kind of freaky deaky. Freaky I'm Mexican. Deaky. I'm Mexican, so I'm a little bit Latina. I mean, okay. So, speaking of that, let's talk about the mayor of Puerto Rico. She uh -huh. became everybody's favorite politician. She stood up to oh, Trump. Ca she, Carmen Julín. Yeah. She's quite a lady. She is. <laughs> She's the mayor of a town, right? Of the city of, of San the Juan. Of the city of San Juan. The city of San Juan. The capital. That's, yeah. right. That's the capital exactly. city. Exactly. Yeah. Well, when the, I believe that you are coming in the area that, that made her very famous, was with, <laughs> uh, you know, after Huracan Maria, that uh, she confronted the president of the United States yes. because of the, you know, of the lack of fundings and, and the uh, uh, help so slow and the, having the, the resources there and then come inside the island. Mm. Can you imagine, picture this, a, a boat, enormous boat that is a that is a hospital a floating hospital just right there with all the the uh, resources the resources yeah. amenities everything and the people could not get it and hundreds and thousands can, can of bottles imagine? of water now, what, sitting what on the dock that? not why, delivered why couldn't they enter no. the boat well because of all the red tape 
Yeah, there was. Um, <laughs> Is that unbelievable? There was, was a, unbelievable. There is a tax and a shipping um, uh, policy that all boats leaving Puerto Rico and coming into Puerto Rico are taxed differently. So they had a hard time getting them into the port without paperwork, without certain types of taxation. Uh, FEMA was very slow to act. Sí, pero that, that uh, uh, boat that you are referring is uh, the one that comes with goods and, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, a, a lot of uh, food and all of that. But the one that I'm talking about, that is the, the, uh, the hospital, the, the floating hospital, yeah. That's federal. Uh, uh, so what happened with that? Why weren't why, why weren't people allowed to get on the floating hospital? Well, because of the uh, they requested papers and did what yeah, type of what paper? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Red because tape. The red tape. Mm -hmm. If you lo if you lose your house and everything, how are you going to remember where is the the paper of this or that? Documentation. See. Well, we're yeah. off to a rock and start. Another exciting show. Another uh -huh. exciting show. I'm if the break you lady. <laughs> you don't have time to find these things out. Just listen to our show. We'll be right back <laughs> after this break. Hi, this is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House. Bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I uh, got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures Scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Tampa Bay Politics. And you have picked a good day to listen to this show because you're going to learn all about what's going on with our Puerto Rican brothers and sisters yes. at their home and here in Tampa Bay. We are so happy to welcome today Sandra Acevedo. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> yes. And she has a very long history in Tampa Bay. She was um, one of the people that helped run the Puerto Rican Day Parade for many years in Florida. 22 years in and founded by her mother. So yes. it's in the mom, family. The first Puerto Rican parade in the entire state of Florida. Oh, I didn't even and, know that. Yes. And We're the, trying to convince her to make it come back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, if out there, you know, it's a sponsor that wants to give us a hand. All right. Well, there could be some knows? sponsors. You heard it here first. You heard it here yes. first. <laughs> because How could they get hold of you? Well, my telephone number is 813 Nine zero zero six four two one. Nine zero zero six four two one. Let's talk a little bit about the island of Puerto Rico. Some people are a little confused about uh, our Puerto Rican citizens, uh, what their rights Can are. They vote? Can they yeah. vote? How we our relationship with Puerto Rico in the past and today? Well, uh, Puerto Rico is a commonwealth. Uh, we are a territory of United States. Uh, Thanks of the, uh, let's say, that they came to the island uninvited. Uh, but, Americans. Yep. The, 1938. The soldier, yep. Yeah. And the scene is that the, it took 24 hours to get possession of the island. And then... By uh, the Spaniards. Uh, by the Spaniards. Well, mm -hmm. Spaniards were there by the United States, was the one that, that invaded the island. And you know something? We are very grateful. We are very grateful for that because when they entered the island, they what they got was uh, they found a, an island very devastated, okay. very poor. They, it was illiteracy. Uh, uh, health was... Subpar. Uh, health was subpar. Yeah. yeah. So 
the improvement that the island have had through the years, we owe that to the United States. Okay. To the point, and listen to this, uh, that is what really <laughs> hit me the most, is that the, uh, through the Congress of the United States, we received the approval of a law. Uh, the number is 936, la 936, law 936. And what, what that means? That means that the that United States authorized companies from here to be establishing the island and don't pay taxes for 10 years. Oh, I see. And then the question is, what did they do then after the 10 years? But they requested an extension of 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right. But what happened? This is this this 936 is so important. Uh, but by, by the time, we don't have it anymore. But that was helped the island to grow financially. Oh, it, it revitalized okay. the ev- island yeah. completely. In every way. Completely. Uh, to the point that Puerto Rico was the most cosmopolitan island. In, in, when you compare with all the islands in the Caribbean, the South America and Central America. Okay? But what happened? Remember that I said that the 936 uh, provide the incentive to companies for not to pay taxes. Right. Okay? Yeah. Not paying taxes. Well, they got used to that. Uh, what happened? <laughs> you know that every four years <coughs> over here, well, we, we have election and and then uh, the president uh, change or stay eight years and then that's it. Well, came, came Ronald Reagan, President Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was the first one to say, you know something? Hmm. He looked at Puerto Rico and he said, it's too much money changing hand. And the companies are making too much money in profit. And Uncle Sam is not getting anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everybody wants a piece of the action. Of course they do. Okay. Capitalism. Okay. Uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, we were very happy because our people had good jobs yeah. with good income mm-hmm. and good benefits and good uh, insurance, health insurance. But when Ronald Reagan said, you know, that they, they began to, you know, uh, to, taxes to, to, yeah, to, to say things like that. Later on, the the director of, of the Treasury, Secretary of Treasury of U.S., he advocated for the to 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 eliminate the 936 from Puerto Rico, and the the governor that we had that was the father of Rose Joe, of the the one that is uh, governor right now. To tell you the truth. He didn't fight the the fight. Yeah. No, because that was to to be in Congress almost uh, almost every single day. So he's, to, he's to succumbed. prevent he's to succumbed. prevent yeah. you see that to happen. So after the 936, what happened? The companies began to leave the island because now it was not profitable for them. And the and and the the island began to decline. Oh. No incentives, yeah. You see, and then on top of that, bing came Maria, the hurricane Maria, and that devastated the island, and that's the reason why Puerto Rico is in the lowest uh, situation right now. It's not that the people not is not working. No, 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 no. It's all of this. What is influence? That is the reason why we have to know the past in order yes. to to understand the present. Um, there's always been a debate about statehood. Mm-hmm. I hear that Puerto Ricans want to yes. uh, have statehood. I've he- heard other Puerto Ricans say, "No, I want to. I want to k- keep my country. I-, I like it the way it is." What's the issue about statehood? Well, well, but let me tell you, uh, we have. Uh, three political parties, okay? The, the Republican, the, uh, the Democrat, and the Independent. That is only 1%, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. they make a lot of noise. Yes. So anyway, the situation is that we have had two referendums, okay, where the 61% of the population has voted that they want 
the statehood. The statehood. Yeah. And we have, a, the, as an example, we put as an example, Cuba. Okay. Puerto Rico is only, it's a small island, only 100 by 35 miles. Okay. okay. And uh, it's going to be very difficult to survive alone. And not only that, we can be we exposed to, to bad influence. Correct. See yes. what I mean? Yes. Russians. Exactly. Communists. And, uh, communists. Ex exactly. Well, we are better off with the United States that we know you, Uncle right. Sam. Uh, we, see what I mean? We go freely. We fly freely yep. from here to, to Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico to our mainland because yes. we belong to here too. And the wonderful thing is um, uh, you have a lot of educated people, like uh -huh. teachers. Mm -hmm. There's trouble in Puerto Rico. They come right to the United States, and we need teachers, Nurses. and they work. N Nurses. Uh, the uh, uh, University of uh, uh, is a university the, in the uh, west area of Puerto Rico. Uh, sorry, but I forgot the name. Okay. Um, from here, they go there to get you know, to, to education. invite, yeah. no, to get our, oh, our students, get to, your students. Also, they're to recruiting. recruiting, they're recruiting. recruiting to bring us here, uh. same as the, as the nurses also. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're a viable workforce. Yes. Well-educated. Yes. Uh-huh. They're very well-educated. So, but that's, that's the situation that we are living right now. Right? Yeah. It was a horror story. It really was. I mean, every inch of the way, the, uh, 3,000 or more people killed. That came out very late in the story. Uh, resources not coming. Mm -hmm. FEMA cutting things off, not giving enough money, yes. changing their mind. Uh, and you were saying that the electricity alone was off in some places in Puerto Rico for up to one year. Yes, yes, up to one year. That's so how many, how many of us could live without electricity for yeah. two days? Try going to month. work. Your office, the hospitals. Uh-huh. I mean, everywhere, everything in our life functions on electric. Exactly. And you're and, telling and us that these people were able to survive just through hustling and scrapping and scraping. Uh, many yep. of them came to Florida. Oh, yes. And yes. they had to escape. They had nothing. Their homes were gone. They were decimated. They were impoverished. They no longer had places to go to work exactly. because they want to work. Mm -hmm. And they're survivors. So they come to our state, and we're 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 you know working with politics, hoping to get them uh, into um, parties that and getting into the voting machine. And you see mm -hmm. that happening. Yes, yes, and we have to continue. You see it uh, promoting the importance of 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 uh, be a voter. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest problem or uh, or obstacle that? Puerto Ricans who fled with nothing from Maria that came here. What are they? What is one of the biggest problems you think they're dealing with? The housing. The housing. Housing Again. And, and, and a job. See? Well, right. they work in whatever is necessary. Yeah. But housing, that's number one, especially if you have kids. See? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that, you know, through days and the time, everything is getting into places. Yeah. Now, do you have any associations they can go to? I mean, well, the one that I that, that I mentioned before, uh, Boricua, Boricua Bota and Mi Familia, uh, de, uh, oh, Borinquen de mi Corazón. Mi Familia yeah. Borin, Boricuas de Corazón. As a matter of fact, this organization, Boricuas de Corazón, they are uh, rebuilding houses in Puerto Rico, uh, I don't know if it's 50 uh, houses that they that they are on you know ongoing yeah. something like that. Yeah. Okay. Do you it's, find that most Puerto Ricans are coming here temporarily or they plan to stay? Good question. Well, that's a very good question because I I don't know. Some will want to stay. Okay. Other want they want to, to go return back. back to the island. You see, because they came well with the same reason that came the others. But especially if they don't have, you know, no one, you know, any family member, they probably they, they want, want to, to be near their back. family. Yes. Exactly. So that's why I wanted to talk about the statehood. If Puerto Rico becomes a state, will that amend some of the problems 
as taxation oh, yes. uh, and the financials. Mm -hmm. Had Puerto Rico been a state, things would have been handled completely different. Completely different. And the thing is that we <clears throat> we pay we pay more taxes. Than, than yeah, you pay more taxes more than taxes Americans. More taxes than That's Americans. True. And weird taxes, yeah. like shipping taxes. More than 11%. Great. Yeah. Do not, something unbelievable. Yes. Yes. So well, I hate otherwise? to tell you this, but as long as we have President Trump, there will be no statehood. Yeah, but we, we can He's always look to the future. Puerto Rico. We can always, always look to the <laughs> well, future. Well, we can continue fighting. Yeah. Fighting the fight. Okay. Yeah. I can't believe it. We're it's on, break we're, time. We're on Latin energy today. We're just busting right through this. <laughs> time for another break. Someone has to pay the bills, right, Daryl? Yeah. Amen. Bye-bye. We'll be back. crash call ricky don't know what to do ask ricky we will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries call ricky at 844-361-7425 after an auto accident you have 14 days to seek medical attention you may be in pain so call ricky ask ricky for your best options 844-361-7425 call ricky ask ricky is a legal and medical referral service the lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded, then maybe you need to check the way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. We're back. The Tampa Bay politics. Now, if you don't have time to find out what's going on in your neighborhood when it comes to politics, just listen to Angela and Mary. We'll let you know. And speaking of what's going on, I'm going to take a brief break to do a little public service announcement for Moms Demand Action, the group calling for common gun sense. So uh, the uh, Mayor Jane Castor accepted an invitation for... Uh, Moms Demand Action, the Wear Orange event, National Gun Violence Awareness Weekend, Saturday, June 8th, at the Fair Oaks Park Community Center, which is right up the street. The mayor will be there at 11. She will have a proclamation for the event. You can wear orange. It's kid-friendly. There's going to be a, a festival. So um, just wanted to give a plug to my, my friends from Moms Demand Action. Um, June 8th, which is a Saturday. Thank you. All right. Back, back to Puerto Rico. Hey, I got a little <laughs> plug. Uh, if there are any Puerto Rican Americans out there who want to come to the Democratic Party meeting, it's the third Monday of every month at 6 o'clock. Yeah. And we meet at the American Legion building at Florida and, um, well, 6918 Florida Avenue, very close to Sly. So guess what? We want you. Yeah, we need them. We need you. We want you registered, and we want you getting to the polls for 2020. <laughs> Woo! That's for everybody. Come on out, registered Democrats. So it, to me, it sounds as Puerto Rico has always struggled, not itself, but had to struggle with the um, colonialism of the United States um, being taken over, uh, the tax um, being rescinded that actually helped to build your country and mm -hmm. give the incentives um, what else has happened in the history of Puerto Rico? It's uh, uh, Christopher Columbus, what, stepped a toe in it? In 15, <laughs> is it 1580? Well, in the yeah. 1493, 1493, in the second voyage. Yeah. And he came with 17, you know, a boat. Well, so uh, when Christopher Columbus put a foot on the island of Puerto Rico, the native, uh, the Taino Indians, they thought that they were looking at gods. Yeah. Oh. Because, yeah, gods that were that was coming from the ocean. 
And they were oh. wearing silver armor and the silver hats, uh -huh. the conquistadores. And, yes, and they yeah. uh, and and the Taino received the the conquistadores uh, very friendly. Yeah, and uh, with the, with hospitality. And unfortunately, the Spaniards didn't receive it that way. Yeah. They because they are in their mind. They they had in their mind that they were there to conquer yeah. the island. Yeah. So. What they did was they slave the Taino Indians, oh. put them to work with long hours and with very little food. So what happened with that? Well, people was getting sick and, and died. The other thing was that the Spaniards uh, came with a lot of disease that the island didn't have. Yeah. See, contagious diseases. Even the flu, something Even that the, the natives had never experienced. A exactly. cold could kill you. So yeah, literally. Nobody knew how to handle that. So they kept dying. And and in top of all of that, they were killed. So they we have no Taino Indians in Not the island. Yeah. No. However, according to researches, sixty six percent of the Puerto Rican uh, uh, population. DNA. Yeah, the DNA in the testing. The DNA yep. comes, you know, with uh, with uh, with Taino. Taino Indians. Do we still find uh, Taino Indians in Mexico or any other part of the world? Probably in in Dominican Republic. Yeah, the, the, but they the, were in Dominican Republic in Mexico yeah, Cuba. and Cuba. Cuba. Uh -huh. But mainly it was the Taino were in Cuba. Uh -huh. They were in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. Dominican the, Republic. the Puerto Rico. Dominican and Cuba are sister islands. Mm -hmm. They're almost identical in every way as far as the resources. They're able to um, build cane sugar. Correct. They're, they're uh, fishing resources. So they, they were very similar. There was the Agriculture. Atua, mm -hmm. Hatue, which is H-A-U-T-E. There was the Atua, Tahino, and there was a third um, Indian, um, Arawak. Those were the Indians of the Caribbean as well. And all annihilated um and genocide by Christopher Columbus and, and Westerners, Western Spaniards coming to the country. So what did Puerto Rico have to offer? I mean, it has a vast amount of resources which have been built upon. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about the rum. Well, the rum's huge industry, the cane industry, the sugar industry. But the coffee. The coffee. The uh, agriculture. Um, what, what happened? See, everything has a, 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 like a cycle. Yes. Okay. Uh, years ago, uh, the Puerto Rican uh, uh, works in the uh, in the land, okay, with the sugar cane and, and all of that. We have a lot of people that had you know a lot of lands and and they transport the the sugar cane in train and blah blah blah. But what happened when the the uh, uh, the industrial revolution hit the island? Nobody wanted to, to, you know, to work in the, the in farm the, in the farm, yeah. no. You see, so then a lot of uh, uh, of those ranches closed, uh, and then the people went to work in, uh, in the cities, in the city, or 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 in companies, uh, uh, big companies, uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, te 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 no technology, hospitals, yeah. hospital, etc. You see how they, yes, how yes. how is the the change? This was the way of the, the world. Business. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I, I like the fact that you were talking about your college education in oh, Puerto Rico. Then the, the And the good education that was made available for mm -hmm. people to rise above and have professional degrees. Well, let me tell you something. I was reading a little bit about the, the origin of Puerto Rico. And, uh, and I said that the, uh, the Americans uh, found... Uh, a town or a, uh, you know, a, a population that was it, it, illiteracy. Yeah. But what happened? The education began in 1600 when the, the, uh, the religious people, the los padres, sí. began to teach the, the, the people, you know, how to read and to write because the idea was to be, you know, to, to receive the, the indoctrination and to be able to read the the uh, all all everything related with the with religious. 
Oh, okay. with, with Catholic. It's, with that Catholic. seemed to be Catholic, how everything happened. In yeah. Cuba, too, they have a brilliant universities, Jesuit mm -hmm, education. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's what everything, you know, the education started just right there. And then, you know, a lot of things that people don't realize is the Afro Puerto Rican mm -hmm. combination and um, the music, the food. And how what I really like about Cuba and the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico is that um, the Africans are honored. They're incorporated. They share yep. that they merge yep. their cultures. Uh, Tito we're Puente, a little, Celia a Cruz. We're having uh, the Dominican Republic now. Yeah. yeah but but not, traditionally. They don't want, yeah, the, Haitian, the Haitians are having a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they that's don't a different story. There. But what, what I'm trying to talk about is these countries for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years because the slaves were brought from the Spaniards, yes, but eventually incorporated in music. Uh, and not only that, food. the the birth of the Puerto Rican came through the through through the union of these uh, ethnic groups, yeah. with the African, the Americans, and the Spaniards. Yeah, and the, the trifecta. product is Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans. And not only that, okay. last year the University of uh, Berkeley uh, made a study. Because they want to, to find out who has the perfect, you know, race. You know really? who, that, who the, the person was? <laughs> the Puerto Rican woman. There you yes. go. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and why is that? Yeah. The well, best be, of all three of groups. The, because of the, yeah. of the, of the uh, three, the you know. The intermingling of yeah, all the three cultures. Yeah. Culture, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I love the music. I, I, uh, the food. Um, the, the the camaraderie when you mm -hmm. go to Puerto Rico it's just you've been right Daryl the man behind the mask okay he's <laughs> he's on his way okay uh -huh. he has Good. a daughter living in a daughter yeah. and son-in-law living in Puerto Rico excellent and, you know the beautiful beaches the fincas the horseback riding mm -hmm. um, it, it's a beautiful island and you know it, I can forest. only imagine how it was decimated uh -huh. yeah it's so anyway heartbreaking. Uh, in Puerto Rico, we have the, the Cordillera Central, which is the group of uh, mountains next to the other, very high, okay? Like two, over 2,000 feet, you know, in height. And that has been helping the island, protecting the island from the, from, you know, from, from the impact yeah. of hurricanes. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and Maria was so big. That even even the, the Cordillera Central couldn't you know protect couldn't, completely couldn't the island. Yeah. yeah, she hit it about what 165 miles an hour. 175. 75. Yep. Oh wow, I can't even imagine. Yep. Sustain, sustain yeah. winds. And in the farms and the and the less and, and the farming industry too, people's homes are built differently. Mm -hmm. We have the bohio, you know, Everywhere. we have different uh, resources that uh, built with. I lived in Panama too, uh -huh. so it's similar in that culture. Um, so I'm sure everything on the farmland, the cows, the cattle, the mm -hmm. pigs were slaughtered, just yeah. just blown away. I mean, and that's your food resources. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Do, do they have any estimate when the island might recover? Well, as soon as the money comes to the island. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Well, the con but, but Congress did say they're going to send some money. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So we're happy about yes. that. I've heard 30 years before it really Who knows? is built yeah. all the way back up to what because it was. We At have least to 30 think, years. We That's have to what think I heard. One, one thing. And it's that the infrastructure is too old. Yeah. Over 50 years old. Same as here. Same as here. Yeah, we have infrastructure issues here. Exactly. <laughs> so we need to, you know, to work on, on all the infrastructure, the streets, the uh, even the, uh, you know, the poles for the electricity and, and all of that. The basics, the yeah. Basics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have to change all of that. So it's got to come from the ground up, literally. Yes. Literally. Literally. Exactly. So that, and, and, and pray the hurricane won't touch the island yeah. <laughs> again. Anymore. Oh, my God. That would be the last that thing you need. Be. <laughs> and know. this was very similar to Louisiana. You know, the same thing. I mean, just help came late. Nobody believed what happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a mess, and it was a horrible mess. And yeah. You know, I always get this question. Okay, Puerto Ricans are arriving here. Mm -hmm. How can we get them registered? We to vote. have to let them know that they uh, uh, inform. Oh, to, mira, we can combine the uh, 
eh, churches. Okay. Churches, it's a churches good is avenue. a good yes. avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they congregate, you see, the, the members. Yes. So it's not a matter of telling them, you see, this is the candidate vote for, for this or that. Yeah. No, it's just a matter of exercise their right. Mm -hmm. Getting That's your paperwork, knowing uh -huh. where to vote. Exactly. And Getting who your is information. Who? And who is, the, who is this and person? Who is the for? other yes. one? And how, then you decide. How well are our Hispanic stations doing? Telemundo, Univision. Do you feel that there is enough political information in the Spanish language to assist or not? To tell you the truth, no. Because uh, uh, everything is money. If you if you want to inform the public, well, you might say something and that's it. But if yeah, you, you get want an eight to second sound you, exactly. Well, yeah. the good news is we have an awesome supervisor of elections, um, Craig, and um, maybe we should talk to him about seeing if he can get some public service announcements on the radio, Spanish speaking radio. And guess who does in the television? Me, in the, media, in the media completely. Yes, see, yes. In, in, yeah, in the radio, in the, the newspaper, yes, in the TV, yes. everything. And guess who does media? Shooting, editing, writing, and producing. Let's talk to Craig. Yes. Let's do it. Speaking of let's do it, another surprising break. It another goes way too fast. Got to pay those bills. We're bringing it back. We'll be back. <laughs> Hey, this is A.J. Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecue? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some. And get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. to come back with us to Tampa Bay Politics. Now, we've got some interesting things to talk about. I cannot let uh, Sandra get away from us without bringing up the question Well, about the it. census. Oh, it's yes. coming up next it's, year. Yeah. It is, 2020 census, and we've got a big controversy in the news. Should the question, are you a citizen of the United States, be on the census? What do you think, Sandra? Well, what I think is that that is going to, you know, to uh, prevent a lot of people to answer the census. Yeah. Because of fear that uh, uh, might come someone to take them, you know, from the home or deportation. The, yeah. Exactly. So that's. Puerto Ricans Probably. are U.S. citizens. Though. Well, well, you, we don't have any problem with yeah. that. Okay. Just but, wanted to clarify that I, there are people yeah. who do not know this, and right. I apologize, mm -hmm. but. They don't know about the territory. They don't know you vote. You know, you, you don't vote in primaries, but you vote in presidential elections. So exactly. There, there's some misunderstandings about Puerto Rico. But, yeah, I didn't can mean to interrupt. Can Puerto Ricans no, okay. vote for president of the United States? We can vote for president of the United States here yes. in the U.S. Okay. if we live here. Yes. But if we are in Puerto Rico, this is, I'm glad that you mentioned that because it's a little bit confusing. For one one part, uh, we send uh, delegates to the to the to the to convention, oh, to, to the convention, convention, to okay. the, the Democratic convention, yeah. and to the also to Republican, the Republican yeah. convention, and we vote there to elect the 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 candidate. You see that we're going to run. Who's actually okay. going to run? Yeah, this is unbelievable. 
And then when when the election day comes, we cannot vote for the for the candidate president. for president in if, Puerto Rico. If, the, if, Puerto Rican, if they live in Puerto Rico. That's right. But you can vote here. So. <laughs> well, if they live here, it is confusing. We can we can vote uh, for the president. So if you're not used to voting for the president because you lived in Puerto Rico, you leave dramatically. You come here and you may have not even known. That yes, as an American in America now, you can vote. Exactly. We need to get the word out. Another thing you mentioned is there are no midterm elections in Puerto Rico, so they nope. could be a little confused that we have midterms. Oh, when they come here, yeah. of course it is, of course because uh, uh, having uh, we have election almost every single year. Yeah, if it's not for city council, that's right. If for, <laughs> yeah. if for the mayor, yeah. if it's not for the mayor, <laughs> if for the for the governor, commissioners, and if, uh, if yeah. not for for the school president, board. the school yeah. board, yeah. yeah, yeah. You see, it's you always are on the go. In, and in, it was a very dismal turnout for our mayoral election. Only twenty five percent of or, the registered or less or less of registered voters came out to vote for mayor, and they live in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So imagine you're coming in. I think that uh, one of the reasons that happened, too, was it was kind of a no-brainer who was going to win. I mean, in front of well, the beginning. But we had a lot of mayoral candidates, though. Yeah. But none of them were likely as as much as Jane Castor. She's a hometown girl, huge backing. She mm-hmm. has the money. She had the money backing her. She had a lot of politicos backing her. I think people got lazy, like, oh, she's going to win. Why should I show up? And that's a lazy attitude they have when voting. I think that's ridiculous. I wasn't able to vote because I'm in the county, but... You know, I could see that apathy. Mm-hmm. People get apathetic. And like I said, if my home and my but there livelihood. there were some very close city council races, though. City council, oh, yes. Yes, yes. Very different. Yes, There were some uh, nail biters there. Yeah. And no women. <laughs> That's a Sorry. Thing. <laughs> Sorry. That one still so, hurts. Uh, next time. Next time. Next time. <laughs> I don't live in the city, so I can't run. You need to move. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god! That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. I'm not. I'm Write not, that down. It's I'm not working. It's getting very expensive in the city of Tampa. Well, you know what? Well, I'll, I'll get a real job. I'll, I'll support you. Oh it, my god! Sacrifices come with the territory. Yeah. Woo. So that, you got the advice. You're getting the double guilt trip, double whammy Latin guilt trip, Latina Let's style. Let's do 2022. You gonna be on my on campaign? <laughs> of course, I, I help you. Yeah. Yes. We'll be the Latin connection. <laughs> exactly. I need that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now you know what but, you have to do. Yes. We do the Girl. rest. How many more? We got five more minutes. Well, the, the thing is that we just really need to get Puerto Ricans registered. Yeah. So I'm, right. we're looking for any way we can communicate to them. So, you know, give them those numbers again. And let them call you. Let them call Lewis, whatever. And please, please come out to the Democratic Party meetings. We know we want you. <laughs> of but again, I'm I can't gonna, speak for the other side. But then again, I'm going to advocate for Hispanic. There's Hispanic Democratic parties. They need to, to also be able to get this information in Spanish. You can go to a Democrat party if you're not. An English speaker. Oh, we'll have and, someone there. Well, that's Spanish. what I'm saying. We'll have someone. Yeah, we need we need to, to the, like you said, the public service announcements mm-hmm. to be done in Spanish, the public access, yep. something like we're doing today. So we need to get information out in the Hispanic language. And we need also more candidates, more than Karen Perez, like her, <laughs> to yeah. run for office. Yeah. Yes, because, because you we know have what? a lot of Puerto Ricans here. Big population. Yeah. What, Big what population. you think about Mr. Suarez? Did did he? Who's Mr. Suarez? The one who ran for mayor. Ah, nice person. Yeah, he was He's nice. He's a very nice person. Do you think the, um, well the Hispanic connected? community was um, excited about him? I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> that shows the, it right there. The scene is that, <laughs> the, that Jane Castor, well, everybody knows her because yeah. 30 years in the, you know, with the police department. Yeah. And and she she's a person that, that as she mentioned, I'm going to move the, the city Forward, yeah. Toward, forward, toward yeah. the the community, yeah. and she's doing it. Okay, okay. So she had some some communication with the yes. Hispanic community. But yes. I think, like okay. I said, it was an, you know that was kind of set in stone. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like you know that if it wasn't her running, Ken would have st- probably stood a better chance. But this dynamic influx of uh, political activists that are Hispanic, I don't see it. I don't see these people. I'm sure they're there. I don't know of them. We haven't had them on our show. I don't know who they are. And I'm, you, you know, said I speak the Spanish. election? Did the yeah. campaign? Yeah. Well, the Puerto Rican community gave uh, uh, Jane Castor the, the, 
the support. Okay. Yes. So and you did and her. also, um, it was a, an event organized by Luis Adorno, uh, and she was there. Good. Yeah. Good. So you are we, active. We, we gave we gave her the endorsement. Yeah. But publicly, the, you know, I'm yeah. not hearing about you know. Uh, Mexicans. I'm not hearing about other Hispanics galvanized to move, and the Puerto Ricans, like you said, now, they're there. Now I must say, there are Puerto Rican events going on. Um, there are different Hispanic events going on, but nobody calls me oh. because I'm not Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, you really have to be involved in the communities to know what's going on because you can't say things aren't going on. It's right. just they're not talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I can I can say. And that is that uh, uh, it was a, 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 a you you went to an, the inauguration of a Puerto Rican restaurant. Yes, it was very town. lovely. Beautiful. Pal Campo. Uh, yeah. uh, Pal Campo. Uh, to the country. On Anderson yeah. Avenue, on Anderson Road. Yep. Uh, exactly. very, uh, and Waters. waters and, and Waters. And uh, they opened up a beautiful new yep. Puerto Rican restaurant. And only because I knew... Wanda and Sandra. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Why wasn't I invited? <laughs> Me gusta monfongo. I like my monfongo. I like saying that word. Uh, it's and delicious. they have a great uh, menu. Mm -hmm. yes, and some, it's a beautiful uh, place. Beautiful costumes, yes. uh, Puerto Rican music. So uh, go over they, there and this... Uh, and, and you're going to feel that you are in Puerto Rico. Yes. And all the, the murals and pictures and... Well, and the food and the environment. Last, last yeah. but not least, because I know we need to wrap up, how do we get more Puerto Rican, qualified Puerto Rican people in elected positions? Are you still working on that? Are you still Who fired me? up? Are you talking to people? Well, I'm still talking to people, but I'm, I'm not going to run to anything. <laughs> I'm retired. No, no, we want to know who you're supporting next time. You did yeah. a good job with Karen Perez. How uh -huh. do you get you the Puerto Rican? You see some future candidates? In you, well, get, I'm going to support Karen Perez again. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think right. what I was asking is how to get Puerto Rican um, residents involved in running for political Well, you parties. know something? How this, is it done? This uh, friend of mine, Luis Adorno, he is uh, involved more in politics. Okay. Okay. So we might have to have him on the show. Exactly. Yeah. Pick, pick I, his brain I a little suggest. bit. Yeah. Thank pick you. Brain. Yeah. I think we're wrapping up, huh, Daryl? What do we got? One minute. One Thank minute. you very much, All right. ladies. Can you for give the those invitation. phone numbers again because we want people to know okay. where to call. Yep. My phone number, first of all, again, my name is Sandra Acevedo, 813 -900 if you want to become a political, you know, a, a, a um, candidate, call Luis Adorno, 813-724-8302. Or just call me. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, Yuli is gone from Tampa City Council. Remember, do you remember Yuli? Yuli? Capin. She was on the city council. She just left. Oh, yeah. the lady that left. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, that's why we don't have a woman, because she left. Uh-huh, I know. Mm -hmm. And other reasons. <laughs> you got to run to get elected. Exactly. I know, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah but get. what I mean is that uh, she was there, and her uh, seat was just filled by a, a gentleman. But, yeah. yeah. Well, All right. another amazing show. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for, for the sharing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> next week, we're looking at having Pat Kemp on, excuse me, Pat I always say the wrong you name. You did. I'm sorry. That's right. Pat Kemp. Oh, I did. Yeah, that's the first the right time one? I said it right. I always get it mixed up. Ed Tarantic. Ed Tarantic. Wow, that's going to be another to talk house. about traffic infrastructure, bringing uh, alternative resources, trains, ferry boats. We're going to be talking about transportation. Transportation. But we have an ad next week. Tune in. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call the Way, where we're educating.